Okay. Ready? <laughs> All right. Just speak to us. Okay. Well, my name is Lourdes Guerrero. Um, I am an unemployed teacher. I grew up here in Chicago. I was lucky. I had a family who valued education and creativity, and they really felt that this it was so very important and nothing was more important than spending money on education nothing we could we might not have had the fanciest shoes but we always had books in the house my father would take us down here to see museums thank you my father would ha take us down here to see museums and we he wanted us to be educated when i became a teacher I became a teacher because I saw that there were so many children who did not have access to a lot of things that other kids. If you were poor, if you were a minority, you didn't have access to creativity, to thinking. You were being treated as a robot. When I became a teacher, I wanted to make that change. In my classroom, I knew I could do that. So for eight years I taught. I taught students how to think creatively. I was, I did not, I mean I could do standardized tests, but I went beyond standardized tests. And I was a good teacher. I was active in the local school council. I fought for teachers' rights. And now I'm unemployed. So for 17 months I've been looking for a full-time job. I've been on unemployment, but I don't want to be on unemployment. I'm a creative person and I'm finding my way in the world. I know I can do it, but what I worry about now is all the students that I left behind. All the children that I know that will not have a teacher, a good teacher, like me or like all the hundreds of other teachers that are unemployed, they will, they do not have the 21st century skills, the creative skills to make it in this world right now. They are just being taught as a robot. And how can they survive? When they lose their jobs, when their jobs close, how are they going to be creative enough to go on and create a job, create a business? Isn't that what we are so proud of here in America, is that we have creativity. And that's what, and now we're making this generation of children who don't have that. So I'm here to bring attention to that, to make people realize that we, ha we, we have to value education. If we don't value education, we value nothing. What, what is it, how important is it to have um, buses or cars if you are not having people who drive them, who think, um, who are using the libraries who read, who go to the museums who can't think creatively. So our money has to go toward education. That is the most important thing. That is the most important thing that our money needs to be spent on is education for our children. And when these economists make decisions, they don't realize that they're making decisions based upon the bottom line. Well, for me, the bottom line is our children. Our ed ed educating our children is the bottom line. Well, I'm going to ask you a couple of uh, questions now, and they may seem out, and I don't want to throw you off and that sort of thing. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm going to pose these things to you uh, in kind of an absurdist sort of realm here. It's okay. I'm, I'm not afraid of critical thinking. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, we're here today about uh, the economist uh, conference that's going on. Some of these, these market-based economists right. are here in Chicago to espouse their, espouse their views. <laughs> um, what is the market value of education? The market value of education that I can see, coming from this limited point of view that I can see, is that if children come out of school as workers, then the education that they receive to get them to that point is valuable. Well, Newt Gindred said, we're not even going to wait till they're out of school, we're going to put them to work in school, Correct. in a scullery. Right, exactly. So um, that is where education is valued by the economists. Now, I actually have a son whose degree is international business, and he does not feel this way. So I know that there's a whole generation of young people who do not think like many of these economists do, that they see the value in education, they see the value in experience, they see the value in humanity and in environmental concerns. They see that because they realize that when everyone, the, the, the cost of living rises for everyone, mm -hmm. then everyone actually does a lot better. Now, in your, in your education and training as a teacher, you were introduced to economic theory, and you were introduced to uh, uh, the way that economic theory is to be introduced into the classroom, into curriculum, and that sort of thing. Right. What, sort of, what, what sort of training or what sort of uh, indication did you 
walk away with of how students are being taught economic principles. Well, Ashley, I think in general, a lot of students aren't taught economics. Because if you keep people ignorant on where the money goes, who's got control of the money, then they are making decisions are being made for them and they don't have any say and they don't need to know because again you keep them stupid then then they're much more malleable to work in Kmart the low paying non unionized jobs <laughs> so it's so i think that's what that's what we're encouraged to do as teachers. If, on the other hand, we really are good teachers, we encourage our students to think and question. And ask questions, not just about what happens in the text, but also, what are we doing? Why is the school system set up this way? Mm -hmm. then, then they become a threat. Those children become a threat. Mm -hmm. The Board of Education, the corporate people do not want those kind of things. That's not what they really want education. Well, let's talk more about the corporate mentality and the idea of education as some sort of industry. What sort of, what sort of product does education bring to the market? In a marketing in a market economy mentality, they want workers. They want menial workers who will do what they are told. That's the reason why standardized testing is so very important. If they do what they are told, here are six things. Memorize six things. Spit back six things at the end of the semester. Did you do that? Great. Now you're not not all. Now you're a wonderful student, but now the teacher will find will get paid as a wonderful teacher because you were able to speak back those six things. Now that child leaves high school, goes to look for a job. The job says, answer these 20 questions. Come in here at this time, do this. Don't ask any questions, just do what you're told. They love it. Let's talk very briefly about education only for the elites. <laughs> Where are your jobs going? Your job. Where is it going? Why is it going there? And who's benefiting? Well, my job, the teacher's jobs right now are being um, outsourced in many, in a variety of ways. I never thought that was going to happen, honestly. When I became a teacher, I thought, you can't, you, you can't send your children outside the country. But in actuality, my own children are leaving the country. My son is gone. My daughter is planning on leaving. Um, there are, they are being paid better as teachers in Abu Dhabi, in Taiwan, in China, in Japan, because those countries value the kind of education our children got. They value the creative thinking that our children received. Those children who can't think outside the box, they don't know any better, so they're happy to stay here and do the menial job. The other way that our that my job is being outsourced is to become a uh, online teacher. Where now I have not just 150 students every day. Now I have 300. I have 400, and I never actually see them. I just talk to them online. And supposedly I'm going to help them become good students by giving them two minutes of my time here and there. And also they can regulate how often I work. Do I work evenings and weekends? Oh, well, they certainly want me to do that, you know? So outsourcing is the big thing. <laughs> well, thank you so very much for talking with us today. I think we... we...